Live, where news comes first. This is ABC7 Extra. It is Sunday, November 27th. Welcome to ABC7 Extra. Hello, I'm Stephanie Guadian. We are glad to have you with us tonight. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Now, for the next half hour, we are going to take a look at the changing way Americans are getting their news. Television news, newspapers, and radio, no longer the only players in the game. Millions now get their news from online news agencies, Twitter, and Facebook, just to name a few. In recent months, though, fake and misleading stories have spread, some arguing the trend, even had an impact on the outcome of the election. Companies like Facebook insist those fake stories make up just a tiny fraction of the overall, overall stories that users share. Still, both Facebook and Google are now taking steps to stop the spread of misinformation. We want to hear from you tonight. You can email us your comments and your questions right now to abc7extra at kvia.com. You can also reach us by calling 915-496-1771 or you can tweet me at Squadion. ABC7. Just remember to use the hashtag ABC7 Extra so I can find you. CEO Mark Zuckerberg said work has already begun to try and eliminate fake news and hoaxes that show up on users' news feeds. The move by the social media leader follows criticism that fake stories on Facebook may have helped Donald Trump win the election. Mark Zuckerberg gave no specifics about how Facebook's news feed might be changed, but he did say this work often takes longer than expected, so there wouldn't be any unintended side effects or bias introduced into the system. Zuckerberg saying we must be extremely cautious about becoming arbiters of truth ourselves. This comes after Zuckerberg's post in which he stressed that less than 1% of the site's worldwide content could be classified as fake and that the fake news occurs across party lines. Keep in mind, Facebook algorithms determine what users see in their feeds, so some users may see more fake news than others. Zuckerberg rejected the idea of Facebook identifying itself as a media company because its primary use is connecting friends. Consider the Pew Research Center found nearly half of Americans get their news from Facebook. Just 2 in 10 U.S. adults get news from print newspapers. Zuckerberg encouraging Facebook's 1.79 billion users to follow updates online. Chief of the online El Paso Herald News and HorizonCity.com and also ABC7's very own Adrian Medina is also here. He is the station's technology development director. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us tonight. So. Do you think everybody knows that there is fake news out on the internet? Is that coming as a surprise to folks? I, I would hope that they uh, would expect there to be fake news out there. Um, but it doesn't look like they, they have uh, mm -hmm. uh, learned how much of it is actually fake. And part of the reason is because it doesn't look like fake news. It, it looks like mm -hmm. the real deal. Yeah, most of the time the websites, you know, you, you have a website, you've got a header up there, you've got a very professional mm -hmm. looking website, you've got pictures, say of the president or of someone, and it looks, it's very easy to form it that way. And once you get it going, you get into the, the meat of the actual story, it kind of gets a little bit murky. Yeah, and I think the headlines grab a lot of people first and maybe not the author or where right. the story is coming from. And maybe folks don't even read the story. They see the headline and then what, hit share? Oh, the uh, clickbait is definitely huge. I think uh, CNN even did their own take on it where they put a, a, a fake uh, headline to see how many people would actually read it. And um, I, I wish people would take more time. If it's too sensational, then mm -hmm. it's going to require a little bit more effort on the reader's part. So, and what is that effort on the reader's part? What is the work that, that folks need to put in to make sure that they're reading, you know, something that's true, well, it's, authentic? It's, it's really just looking at exactly what the content of the story is. If it seems too good to be true, mm -hmm. it probably is. If it's confirming something that's a little bit out there, I think you better be able to take a step back and say, well, wait a minute, is the, how come I didn't see this on a reputable news site? In other words, mm -hmm. the, you know, ABC, NBC, uh, the, the New York Times, how come they didn't have it first? And that's mm -hmm. usually the question a lot of people have is, well, how do we know that you, that you don't have fake news? Well, you're not going to survive too long if you keep putting out fake stories because eventually they will get found to be fraud. So you go to the, the, the known news sites and then check it against there. And if they don't say, you know, a Martian caught waving at the camera, <laughs> it's a pretty good indication. It's probably not a real story. Yeah, if you see it on ABC News, NBC, you're going to see it on Fox News. All the big uh, companies are going to have it. So if you don't, be suspicious a little bit.
it. Now, you had some examples of uh, some s suspicious stories. Well, there was one that, that, that hit right after the election where uh, there was this gentleman who took a picture of several buses in Austin, Texas. And he tweeted out just offhand, he goes, hey, I think I found out where all of those protesters were coming from, the anti-Trump protesters. And that got picked up so quickly. Mm -hmm. And he was just trying to be a little bit ha-ha funny, but a lot of the sites that had picked up on people who were against Trump picked that up and then they themselves started writing fake stories to fit that narrative and 24 hours later you know the guy started with I think it was 40 he had 40 followers by the end of the day he had 11,000 and he was being requoted and requoted and he said it's not true but the truth was was knocked to the wayside by his attempt at humor Okay, all right, we're going to go back in time a little bit. You guys were uh, you both at KVI, KVIA when the Internet news really caught on and, and the station had to look at expanding not just the newscast, but we had to sort of jump into the Internet game. What was that like? Correct. Uh, that was 2004, I believe, that we actually decided to pull all, all our eggs in one basket and let's, let's go here. You know, we've done broadcast so well, let's go and do it online. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we had the technology available that we do now. It makes everything so much easier. We get our video up there a lot faster. Um, I, I think Storm 2006 was also a big learning curve for us in, in how to do news um, online. I, I think that showed that we, we streamed, I think it was 13 years worth of video in, in one day or something like that. So it's, it's been a, a journey to say the least, but you have to shift broadcasters' mind to become online. And think about the rest of the story, not just what you see, but mm -hmm. what you can click on. And I think that's what's harder to, to relay to, you know, you know journalists. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, it's a struggle for, <laughs> for some of us who've been in the business for a while. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, our motto here now is digital first. But you remember a time when you sort of had to argue or, um, you know, ask the station to, to pay more attention to it, it online was, news. It was difficult because it was such a new media. I mean, I've been in, involved with the Internet going all the way back to 95 when I was coming out of UTEP. You know, I took basic classes. I took all these, these ancient languages and programming, and I started to build websites. And I saw what was there of course I didn't have the vision of Mark Zuckerberg you know I had a, a <laughs> chat room for people to talk about their their racing comments but when I started seeing where it was going and I ended up getting hired here at 7 it was a situation where you knew that people that it, there was a shift coming whereas before the broadcaster said here's what we have come to us now it was the consumer taking over and saying, I want to see this I want to see this and I want to see it here so that's mm -hmm. always a hard shift and we're still not done with it yeah. And, and not only that, but the viewers have, uh, at times, um, helped provide the news or help us cover the news. Oh, yes. Uh, I think the, the best example of that is when there is breaking news or mm -hmm. breaking weather. We get quite a bit of uh, pictures and videos, actually, from our audience. So we're, mm -hmm. we're having to adapt that technology to display it because how do we get it quickly on air? So we've you know, gone out and got new software so we can put it directly to air a lot faster. So it's, it's great to see the, the citizen journalism, so to speak, where everybody reports it. The problem there is everybody reports it and they don't know that their opinion can be taken as fact. Yeah. yeah. Well, we do have people weighing in on this story. We posted this story on our Facebook page, <laughs> a preview of what we were going to be talking about tonight. So I want to read a couple of Facebook messages that we have received here. The first one is coming from Justin Meyer, and he says, Believe nothing that is posted on Facebook or Twitter if reputable newspapers or media outlets print or report on a story with sources verified. Then I'll be inclined to believe the story. Otherwise, Forget it. We got another one from Brian Fury. If you believe anything you read online at face value without <coughs> checking facts and sources, then you're part of the problem. Ariel says, there is always bias in the news. You have to be able to see a story and then research it and find facts for yourself. We got one more to share with you. This one comes from Stephanie Falcon. Who decides to who gets to decide what is fake and what is the truth? When the government assumes that, that kind of control, it is dangerous. So definitely some strong opinions out there. But I, I, I think it's important just to let people know. I mean, is it easy for folks to create fake news? Yes. Oh, it's, it's easy. I mean, you can, uh, given the technology and the ease by which you can put up websites, you can have a fake news website up and running in a couple of hours. I mean, you can have that 
so quickly. And there was a, a case study done by the Los Angeles Times where they actually looked at these two gentlemen who started a fake news website. And when they post a story, they have a headline, they just throw headlines back and forth. They have the headline, then they throw the story out there. And within the first hour, they've got 1,000 viewers. And then by the end of the day, they've got 40,000 viewers. At this time, and according to LA Times, they're making $45,000 every 20 days on fake news. And this is news that they're laughing about. This is news that they know is fake, but the thing they're, prob they're troubled with is the response they're getting. So people are giving them tips and saying, you're the only news we trust because you're outside the government and nobody, you know, we trust you for your news. And they're saying, we make it all up. And still, people uh -huh. go to that website. Okay, so there's the ha-ha factor, but if they're now actually making money, that would lead me to believe that this may not be going away anytime soon. No, it's so easy to make money. And, and what it is, it's eyeballs equals money. And if you've got a, if you've got a website and you lead with you know, six-eyed fish in the Rio Grande, there's somebody that's going to click on it and it's going to share it, and that's going to mean more eyeballs. Okay, it sounds interesting. <laughs> Not necessarily true. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to pick up the conversation. Remember, we want to hear from you. If you want to share your comments or you have questions for one of our guests, you can call our comment line, 915-496-1771. And if you're online right now, you can email us at abc7extra at kvia.com. Tweet me at Esquadion ABC7. Just use the hashtag ABC7extra. We'll be right back. There were a lot of people who weren't sure how big this phenomenon of people connecting online would be, or how long it would last. But by now, I think that most people see that social networks are going to be a ubiquitous tool used by billions of people around the world to stay connected every day. Zuckerberg talking about social media not going away. Definitely not anytime soon. Welcome back to ABC7 Extra. Joining us again, Chris Babcock, the editor in chief of the online El Paso Herald Post and the HorizonCity.com. ABC's very own Adrian Medina is also here. He's the station's marketing, research, and technology development director. Guys, thanks a lot for being <laughs> here tonight. Long titles. Yeah. <laughs> so, w was there a point when you thought maybe, you know, Facebook was just a trend, it was going to go away, or Twitter just a trend? Friend, or did you have kind of a gut feeling? Well, I, I think when Facebook first came out, it was an, a novel way to keep connected. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you started to see the momentum, how many people started to get on there, not just uh, universities and not just, you know, kids. You know, mm -hmm. there was a comment made, it's only uh, kids and, and, and ugly stuff on the Internet. And then I think Facebook brought it uh, to a different level. It brought the discussion out from underneath and instead mm -hmm. of it being Google as a number one website, now Facebook is. So I think they were fighting back and forth on that. But once you saw that transition, we were like, we got to get on this. I think it was 2008 yeah. that, that we actually opened up the KVI Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we and started, that was just mm, the beginning, right? I mean, we have now evolved where you say we need to be on 10 sites. 10 social media, <laughs> well, preferred. Preferred. Uh, credibility, mm -hmm. reputation builders, that kind of stuff. Uh, but when we talk about Facebook is sort of your, your, your platform, mm -hmm. your base. And now you have a Facebook. I do have a Facebook page. Everyone here uh -huh. has a Facebook. Yeah. As it's uh, actually required. Part of our digital mm -hmm. first initiative for News Press and Gazette, our owners, was we're going to give everybody their own Facebook page. And we're going to give them the tools and the resources available. Mm -hmm. Because it's huge. I mean, uh, I think it, there might be a video of how we monitor is actually how we form the story. So if something really takes off on our website, we'll go, hey, there, it's something really hot on the internet right now, and we can see the traffic live. So yeah, and here, here's what you actually see. So as you can tell, this is actually a live snapshot of our website, uh, and it's, it's still being in development, uh, but it shows where traffic's coming from, real-time updates as to where they're going, how many comments, that kind of stuff. It just gives us more feedback, and we really are data mining. Uh, we're, we're looking at so much data. 
-hmm. it's it's insane. Do you do something similar to this? Yeah, we've Chris? got a, we've got a similar mm -hmm. program that we look on the back end of, of our of, of our websites, and it really does help. And Herald Post and HorizonCity.com are very hyper local. In other words, we're only going to cover stuff that happens mm -hmm. here in the borderland, specifically with with El Paso, whether it be you know uh, an upcoming event or an awards assembly or something like that. That's what we're covering. And when we put those stories up, for instance, just this past weekend we had uh, the the parade. We put the parade up there with the with the uh, gallery, and that's our number one story. You know, and then mm -hmm. another story comes along and says, "Hey, we might need to do a follow up on that." And then we put up more pictures, or we put one of my columnists or a reporter on it, and it really helps because then you're giving the public who's yeah. using your website mm -hmm. news that they can use. And instant feedback. They let instant. you know whether or not they like oh, what you're putting yeah. out there. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, we of course ask people to call into this show, and I think we have one of those calls. Caller, go ahead. Roy Aldridge. Uh, brief message is. Uh, that I firmly believe that 99.9% .9 of uh, the uh, Facebook uh, uh, media that we have is totally uh, false, and we have nothing but uh, yellow journalism throughout our new, uh, newspapers, and this includes the uh, El Paso Times. We need to bring back a dual newspaper uh, in El Paso, such as the Herald again. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. All right. Well, thank you very much for calling. We appreciate you sharing your opinions. And actually, you do have uh, a second paper, this one online, though, the yes. Herald Post. Yeah, the Herald Post, that was one of the ideas, was just to, to come back and put the Herald Post online. That way, people could actually have an alternate view of what's going on. Of course, you know, we're only a year and a half old. We've only reinvented the wheel a little bit. But when you look back at the old Herald Post, when you look back at what it was back in the 20s and 30s, it was very much a, a printed social network. It told you what cotillions were coming up. It told you what events were going on at Fort Bliss. And the community responded to that. And we're still trying to work that out. And we feel online is the best place for the Herald Post to be in. You know, eventually, we're going to get to the point where we're going to have reporters. I, right now, I have 10 columnists who can write. I've got a couple of photographers. So we're, we're developing the newsroom, but it does cost money. And, and as we've seen uh, with the models at work, you know, in order to get good journalism, you have to pay for it. And that's where that fake journalism comes in because it's fake. It's making somebody else money, and it's not real. I mean, it's getting you to click, and you think you're getting real stuff, and you're not. <laughs> yeah, so they need to do their homework a little bit. We have another call in. Let's go ahead and take that call. Caller, go ahead. Hi, my name is Mark. I'm in the east side. And uh, just, I do remember a few years ago, there was a fake story on Facebook about Juan Gabriel's uh, passing away. And I personally gave the news to some people that work in Mexico, that are Mexican nationals that work in the office next to me, and they were devastated. And I tried to prove it to them. I went back in Facebook and checked it, and it was gone. But then I checked on the Internet, and they reported it was a fake story. So, um, you know, even, it, it even hits things that impact the borderland. So... Uh, hopefully we don't see any more of these stories in, in this type, but uh, I'll, um, I'll, I'll be interested to hear your comments. Thank you. And thank you very much for calling. That is the worst when you think you, you've seen something and then you tell your friends and they have a good laugh because screenshot <laughs> screenshot is your friend when yeah. in, in cases like that I, I will say that when you're talking about uh, fake stories and you see something mm -hmm. there are resources like Snopes that you can go to and, mm -hmm. and type it in because there's a lot of recirculation of fake stories tell people what that is that website Snopes mm -hmm. S-N-O-P-E-S it's basically a, 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 I guess a directory is the best way to describe it of uh, fake headlines and mm -hmm. to prove that it's fake or that it's not fake it's and, a, and they spend story. most of their time researching I mean they, they've got they've got their own uh, list of stories and they'll come up every every few days what's going on uh, it, there's a myriad of stories and now yeah there it is snopes.com and and now there's people who say well snopes is is not real snopes is real <laughs> snopes has been around long enough where they've got some cachet credible. there in there and they're credible i mean they're very credible and they, and they bust these rumors but going back to what the caller had said you know s local stories they do do that there, there, there's an example that happened just last year where uh, uh, an online quote unquote news site decided to publish a rumor and it was a story that oh somewhere in the lower valley there's a church where the priest went crazy and decapitated the nuns and the kids there and it led to the desecration of a church and a graveyard. And, and Channel 7 ca covered it, and we all covered it. And it was a false story. But it, what it did is it fed into some preconceived notion that, oh, this is happening, so everybody went out there. And it, it really created damage. And that's, that's the fear, mm -hmm. is that all of these fake news stories, at one point or another, there's going to be a tipping point where they will create either violence or, in this case, damage. Mm -hmm. And it did. So this year, 
the same website, put the, put the story up again, but this time the residents of the community were ready and they stayed overnight and the sheriffs were down there and they prevented it. But it all could have been avoided if people had just done their research. And found out. Uh, this reminds me a little bit of, a, remember uh, earlier this year we had the crazy clowns going around and folks were scared and, and thought that the clowns yes. were uh, haunting their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, we did a story on it, but it makes you wonder if maybe that didn't start with some fake news. Um, I don't know if it was fake. Uh, I think there are some uh, instances where people do see these things, mm -hmm. but then it, I think the, the mind is a little different than what you, you, you want it to be. I, I, you put too much fear into it and then it just spreads quick. And then people want to jump in on the, on the, on the, on the mania. In other words, mm -hmm. I remember seeing the story three years ago. It was happening in suburban uh, London that there were these people dressed up as clowns. Yeah. And it took a year to get here. But it started in the East Coast and it spread all the way to the West Coast. And there's people who mm -hmm. want to get in on it and have the funny videos. And, and it, it became yeah. a story. So it was almost a self-fulfilling prophecy where it started out as a fake news story. Okay. Well, we're glad that one went away. <laughs> all right. Um, yeah. Please stay with us. You're watching ABC 7. What we bring to folks out there is correct. That's correct. And uh, we pride ourselves on that. We don't want to be first. We want to be right. If we can bring it first, even better. But I'd rather be right than, than first. Mm -hmm. yeah, and going back to the Juan Gabriel story, I mean, I had seen that too. So when I actually ran across that story on Sunday uh, from Mexican news media, first reports came out. I didn't immediately tweet it. I went ahead and looked at three or four different mm -hmm. national websites. And when they had it, okay, this is pretty much verified. Mm -hmm. We're going to go with it. And it's better to be correct than it is to be first. And I think that's what we have to remember, we have to remember that we have that, that, uh, that weight on our shoulders. Mm -hmm. And we do have, uh, you know, folks at home can become a journalist. Mm -hmm. They send us their video. They send us pictures. They send us information. We just ask that you stay safe whenever you do that, but we certainly appreciate <laughs> it. So that's where we are now. What do you guys see when you look into the crystal ball looking towards the future? I think it's more. It's going to be hyper local. It might even be to the to the point of where you have neighborhood news, where you can have what we're looking at with the post is uh, covering basketball games. For instance, our number one most viewed story on HorizonCity.com is a radio stream of the little league or the t-ball games, which are announced <laughs> just like a regular major league game. Those get us the most views and the most hits, and then they go along to read the other story. So it's going to be more of that, because as the corporations come in and take over more of the, the local news, mm -hmm. and they push that out, there's going to be that need for it. Okay. And we look on the, the television side? The television is, is still evolving and we're still learning how to to get stuff on air mm -hmm. online and do it in a timely fashion so to see what's going to happen in the next five years I, I wish I, I, could, <laughs> I could tell you uh, but I do know that it's it's going to be dependent on our devices mm -hmm. what these devices can bring to us and and true it's hyper local but also you know engaging uh, the interactiveness of the media I think it's going to become more interactive mm -hmm. uh, I know that video right now is really huge with Facebook so much so that they do the Facebook live yeah. what's the next level is maybe VR live so I mean there, there's so many levels that you can go down and say how am I going mm -hmm. to engage yeah. the outside world and we are reaching out for devices we've got our apps yes. our KVIA apps oh yes mm -hmm. we have KVIA.com we have our storm track weather uh, mm -hmm. and traffic app and uh, you know those are very very popular I, I am I think we're about to hit 100,000 downloads on mm -hmm. our news app alone, and we're over 25,000 on our traffic app that we just launched in January. Yeah. So uh, I think the most telling fact is that phone, 10 years ago, that was a live truck. You, <laughs> if you wanted to do a live yeah. from somewhere, yeah. that was a live truck, and now it's in your pocket, and that's available to yeah. everybody. Yeah, I uh, was covering a court case last week, was able to do a live shot uh, on oh, Facebook right. Live. Yeah. So, and we do hope that you check out our Facebook page and our Twitter page and our Snapchat and everything that we have to offer. Thank you guys so much for course, uh, stopping by and, and take us down memory lane and giving us a glimpse <laughs> of the potential future. Thank you so much. And we want to thank you for watching. I'm Stephanie Guadian. This has been ABC7 Extra. Have a great week ahead.